1974, viewers of Saturday morning television were in for a big surprise when CBS, working with Filmation and a handful of other studios, made the decision to overhaul their cartoon-heavy lineup with live-action programming designed for kids. One of the first to debut was Shazam, starring Michael Gray as Billy Batson, and Jackson Bostwick as the hero that he transforms into with one magic word. Man, I really love this photo. Of course, it's just a publicity still. There's no way that Billy Batson and Captain Marvel could ever be in the same shot. They are, after all, essentially the same person. Still, it's a great picture, and it does a good job of establishing just how heroic Jackson Bostwick looked wearing the traditional Captain Marvel uniform. The show would start each week by explaining that Billy Batson had been chosen from among all others by the immortal elders Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, and Mercury, and that with his mentor he traveled the highways and byways of the land on a never-ending mission to right wrongs and develop understanding and to seek justice for all. Man, I ate this stuff up. I really did. Way back then, I didn't blink twice at the cheesy mix of live action and animation on the intro. When Billy Batson in Times of Danger and Need uttered that single word Shazam, I was in seventh heaven. Yep, we had live action superheroes again on TV. Something that I hadn't seen since 1968 when the dynamic duo were part of ABC's primetime lineup. And well... Batman's sole purpose, at least way back then, was to entertain this version of Shazam, as explained in the intro, sought to forge understanding. Yep, in between my bites of Lucky Charm cereal, I would actually learn a thing or two about how to interact with others and make good decisions each day. And as if that weren't enough, at the end of each episode, Captain Marvel would show back up and summarize the lesson that I should have learned from that week's episode. Yep, no doubt about it, I am a better person because I watched Shazam on Saturday morning TV. I remember reading a TV Guide article way back then about how they made actor Jackson Bostwick fly. Admittedly, the special effects employed on the show weren't great, but they were enough, at least in 1974. What impressed me the most from the article was the old school method for filming flight. In many cases, they were simply strapping jacks into a diving board that had been placed on top of a vehicle and then driving him down the road while they filmed. Shazam was such a success that as it moved into season two, a companion program starring the lovely Joanna Cameron debuted alongside it. I watched both shows, one for the heroism and adventure, the other for the same things, plus, well, other things that might interest a young man just entering his teenage years. As you might be able to tell, I thought the actors on both shows were great, especially Jackson Bostwick. So you can imagine my surprise when after just two episodes of season two, this guy showed up. Without any sort of fair warning, something had happened to Captain Marvel. He didn't look the same at all. He seemed less heroic and slightly more portly, to tell you the truth. I didn't get it. What happened? Was this part of a story? Had the real Captain Marvel been kidnapped? Unfortunately, as the season went along, I realized that this guy was here to stay. Don't get me wrong, I still watched the show. He wasn't bad. He just wasn't as great. So what happened? Where did Jackson Bostwick go? Well, according to Wikipedia, when Bostwick did not show up for a shooting one day, the producers accused him of holding out for a higher salary and terminated his employment on the spot, replacing him with actor John Davey. Bostwick tried to explain that he'd sustained an injury from the previous day's filming and had gone to seek medical treatment, but apparently they were not buying his story. Bostwick did successfully litigate against Filmation Associates and they were forced to pay him for the remainder of his contract, plus residuals, for the entire second season. Since that time, Bostwick has appeared in several minor movie roles, such as A Century in My Science Project back in the mid-80s, and a guard in, Tr well, multiple guards in Tron. He also played a park ranger, Mark O'Brien, in the horror film uh, The Prey way back in 1984. At some point, Bostwick returned to Alabama and taught theater at Auburn University where he directed several plays, including The Ballad of the Sad Cafe. 
Bostwick is a frequent comic convention attendee and he's in the process right now, he's been talking about it for actually for quite a while, of finishing up a book about his life and career called Myth, Magic, and Immortal. So there you go, end of the day. While maybe things worked out differently than expected, they have all worked out well for the man who once played the world's mightiest mortal. Now it's your turn to let me know what you think. Did you watch Shazam on Saturday mornings? And if you did, did you notice the season two switcheroo? Let me know who was your favorite Captain Marvel in the comments section below. And while you're at it, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up. And what the heck, why not consider subscribing to the channel? On it, I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.